Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at what the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine actually is and how it works. As a quick overview, this vaccine uses a virus which cannot replicate in your cells to trick the cell into producing the coronavirus spike protein. Your immune system then recognizes that protein and exhibits an adaptive immune response, creating antibodies against it. We'll cover as far as the production of the spike protein in this video. If you want me to do more, feel free to let me know down in the comments section. Right then. This is Chadox 1, that is chimpanzee, adenovirus, Oxford 1. It's an adenovirus, a family of viruses, and the largest naked viruses. They don't have a lipid coating. That's a protein. There are plenty of different types of adenoviruses that are contagious in humans, causing everything from the common cold to pneumonia. However, as they are in circulation, they are endemic in humans, lots of people have built up antibodies against them. The idea behind using a chimpanzee adenovirus is that we don't have any pre-existing immunity to it. That means the immune system won't stop the vaccine from getting into your cells where it can do its job. So far, this is just a virus that's going to cause a common cold. Two things have to happen to it in order to turn it into the vaccine that we want. Firstly, it can't be able to replicate in the human body. We don't want to create an actual infection here, remember? It needs to cause an immune response and then disappear. The second thing it needs to do is cause an immune response to the coronavirus spike protein, which is obviously not what would normally happen. To get it to do this, we have to genetically modify it. <laughs> That's why you'll see trending Twitter things about how the vaccine contains genetically modified cells. Technically, that's not true. There are no cells in the vaccine, as viruses aren't alive. They're a collection of proteins, lipids, and either RNA or DNA. There's a reason they're called virus particles, rather than virus cells. Anyway, the question is, what's happened to this adenovirus? Well. Chadox-1 has had three modifications to its existing genome, in genes E1, E3, and E4. They all code for non-structural, regulatory proteins, which have a similar function to hormones in humans. E1 is essential for the virus to replicate, so as soon as you delete that, it can't replicate or cause an infection. Naturally, it's not there in Chadox-1. E3 is deleted for two reasons. Firstly, it's not essential to the genome, so it increases the space you have to work with for the spike protein. There's a limit to the amount of DNA you can fit inside one virus. The spike glycoprotein DNA is about 3.8 kilobase pairs, or 3,800 nucleotides. These wouldn't normally be there, so you have to make space. The second reason is that normally, the gene stops the immune system from recognising that there's anything wrong with the host cell. This isn't what you want if you're trying to get the immune system to recognise the spike protein. Finally, E4 is replaced by a different E4 from another adenovirus. E4 is important in DNA transcription for the virus. Only the original E4 evolved to work in chimpanzees. It was replaced with the equivalent from a human adenovirus to increase the yield from the manufacturing process. In order for it to grow, the original virus is placed into a cell culture. These cells contain the virus gene E1, which, as we said before, is what they need to replicate. That means the virus can replicate within those cells for manufacturing purposes, but not within any cells in our body. As a side note, the cell culture it is placed in is from the cell line HEK293, that is, human embryonic kidney cell. 293 is because the creator of these cells numbered his experiments, and this was his 293rd. They are the descendants of a cell from aborted fetal tissue. The cells were modified to bring them back into the cell cycle for replication. They've been cultivated since 1973 and divide every 36 hours, so the cells used today are very distant descendants of the original. You should know that since these cells can be cultured indefinitely, they are technically immortal, and are not present in the final vaccine, it is widely considered to be an ethical use of cells. The Pope himself has said that they are in line with Catholic beliefs, as they do not increase the demand for aborted tissue. Finally, the last part of the genome is the SARS-CoV-2 spike glycoprotein. It's used by the coronavirus to enter host cells, binding to an enzyme, ACE2, and fusing with the cell membrane. 
So, if you can get an antibody on the end of the protein, the virus won't be able to enter the cells in your body, meaning that if you are infected, it will be much less severe, and you may not even be contagious. That's the aim of this whole thing, getting the body to produce antibodies against the spike glycoprotein to stop serious COVID-19. So how does it actually work? Well, this bit is relatively simple. When it's injected in your arm, the virus naturally finds its way to your cells. Adenoviruses don't have spike proteins like SARS-CoV-2, but they have something similar called a fiber protein. This is used to enter the cell membrane, and they end up in vesicles. They are immediately sent to endosomes, which are a kind of sorting organelle in your cells. When they get there, the endosomes become more acidic. This breaks down the capsid, and the DNA is exposed. The broken down capsid and other proteins are toxic, and breach the endosome membrane. This allows the DNA inside to escape, and make its way to the nucleus. The viral DNA never integrates with our DNA, instead content to sit and be translated separately. The DNA which is expressed is the DNA for the spike glycoprotein. Your body recognises the glycoprotein as foreign and mounts an adaptive immune response, causing antibodies to be produced and T cells to be activated. They remain in your body, ready to protect you in case you encounter the real thing. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe for more.